And I want to ask you today right now, what is that impossible situation before you? What is that challenge before you? Now, you bring it to know before God, and what does the Word of God say concerning that no challenge? You believe the Word of God above that challenge, irrespective of that that challenge, and you will become, hallelujah, what you believe God for. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen. Wow, you're most welcome to this service tonight, and I trust that you're all well, and I know that the grace of God is keeping you all in His tender care. Praise God. And um, this is our Friday Revival service, and I pray and I hope that um, the grace of God is keeping you all, and that you will surely be blessed tonight as you, you know, uh, participate in this service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So don't just be an onlooker. But be a participant in this service no, tonight. And I know that no, you shall be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. My name is Clifford Omarge, God's Minister of Miracles here at Lighthouse Gospel Ministries in Brentwood and Essex. Uh, Lighthouse Gospel Ministries is an evangelistic outreach ministry. We have been ordained and commissioned by our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ to preach His gospel. And what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's quite simple. Uh, God loves you. Uh, that is good news. <laughs> God loves you. God cares about you. Okay? And um, He created you. Okay, according to his, I mean, in his image, he created you and I in his image and according to his likeness because he wants to spend eternity with you. God wants to spend eternity with you, he wants to spend you know every day with you, he wants to spend every every waking day with you, not just in this life but also for all eternity. But because of sin, sin came into the world, okay, Adam and Eve were deceived by Satan the devil who is still deceiving the whole world today and he deceived them to sin against God, to disobey God's command and as a result you know, they lost that uh, divine nature and took on the sinful nature which every human being has you know, inherited but when you come to realization, you come to Jesus Christ, when you repent of your sins, when you ask God for forgiveness and you accept God's for, for, uh, forgiveness, and you receive Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Savior and Lord, you are then delivered from that sinful nature. You are delivered from the power of darkness, from Satan's power, Satan's grip, Satan's hold, into, and you're translated into God's kingdom, to a child of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the child of God is one who, the Bible says, that for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Praise God. So, once you are born again, once you are born of the Spirit of God, you are an overcomer. And we overcome by what? By our faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, we talk about this, we teach this, we preach this, you know, week in, week out, and we are out on the streets as well, reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, just to let you know that, you know, um, uh, we don't carry out this ability by, we don't carry out this assignment by our own abilities, but it's by the person and the power of the Holy Spirit because He is the one in charge here. Yes. And as an evangelistic outreach ministry, we are a ministry of reconciliation and not a ministry of condemnation. So whoever you are, we do not condemn you, but we are here to tell you that the same Jesus Christ who has transformed you know, countless billions, he will do the same for you and he will do much more as well for you if you choose to turn, you know, to say, uh, uh, and repent, of, to turn away from sin, to repent of your sin and um, follow him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, but if you, on the other hand, you reject him and you choose, uh, this is not for me, you have chosen to spend uh, the rest of your life in misery, uh, God forbid, and also uh, eternity in a place called hellfire. God forbid, it's not for you or anyone who's watching this at all in Jesus' mighty name, but we have to let you know that is the truth. Okay, all right, praise God. All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, hallelujah. Now, um, we want to go straight into the message, you know, uh, the, the word that the Lord has you know, for us you know, tonight. And um, we are looking at, we are continuing with the topic which, we've been, which we started about you know, four weeks ago on faith, the way to walk with God. Faith, the way to walk with God. Praise God. And this is a follow-up you know, teaching on the topic we, dwelt, we dealt, uh, um, which we examined uh, for about a couple of weeks on 
uh, walking with God, walking with God. So now we've been talking, over the last four weeks now, we've been talking about faith for our Friday services. This is the fourth week. We're talking about faith, the way to walk with God. Praise the Lord. And our anchor scripture is taken from the book of you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I trust that you are all you can all, you know, um, go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, So therefore we walk by faith and not by sight. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, when we're talking about you know, walking with God, so I mean the topic again, remember I said is faith, the way to walk with God. Faith, the way to walk with God. So how can you walk with somebody that you do not see? Uh, and that is where faith comes in. You walk with him. Faith in what? Faith in him through his word. Praise the Lord. Faith in God through his word. Hallelujah. So you had you know, different people in scriptures who walked with God. Now, um, in the book of you know, Genesis, let, let, me, let me just give an example here. In the book of you know, Genesis, Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17. Please turn with me to the book of you know, Genesis. We do a lot of um, scripture. We look at scriptures. Genesis chapter 17. I'll read from verse 1. I'll read verse 1 and 2. It says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. So it says there that, you know, um, when Abraham was 99 years old, um, the Lord appeared to him, this is at 99, okay? Appeared to him saying, I am all, he, he said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be what? And be blameless. Walk before me and be blameless. And verse 2 says, you know, that and I will make my covenant between me and you. So, in walking with God, in walking with God, God enters into a covenant with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God enters into what? A covenant with us. Now, what is a covenant? A covenant is a, an agreement between two or more you know, parties to do or not to do something specified. Okay, yeah. And I've given this example many times, like your mobile phone, for instance. You no, know, your mobile phone. You know, your contract with your mobile phone. That's a covenant. Okay, all right. So they will keep providing you with you know uh, minutes, and you know text, voice, and text. You know um, minutes, and um, uh, maybe say you know whatever amount amount of data that you need, on the condition that you pay your bills every month. That's a covenant. So if you pay your bills, if you pay your bill when it's due, they keep giving you their minutes. You get the voice minutes. You get the, you know uh, text um, um, uh, allowances. You also get you know, your data allowances as well, which you have signed up with them. But if you refuse to pay your bill, or you don't pay your bill, or for one reason or the other you don't pay your bill, <laughs> sorry. You can't get, you know, you, you know, the, the, the line will be, uh, you'll be restricted. You can't really make, you know, calls in that respect. Now, so, so you can see that, you know, something, you have to do something. They have to, so they, 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 they are committed to providing this service to you as long as you are committed to paying. Now, if you put that in context with, with God, our Heavenly Father, God is saying, if you obey my word, if you put your faith in my word, I will do for you what no man can do. And I will keep doing it for you as long as you continue to obey my word. It's one thing to say, I believe in God. It's another thing to really believe him and then do his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope that makes sense to somebody there. I decree the spirit of understanding that the Lord will release understanding to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. It's so, it's so, it's so, so important. Understanding is so important because... In now Wednesday service, in our Wednesday, you know, uh, teaching, we talked about you know uh, the parable of the sower. And one of the things you know was that you know for the seeds that were scattered on 
um, on the wayside, uh, you know, the interpretation of it or the meaning of it was that you know, there were those you know, who received the word, but they did not understand it. And when they did not understand it, the evil one, the devil comes and you know, starts it off from their, uh, from their hearts so that they will not really be profitable. No, but I decree tonight that you will have understanding of what the Lord is saying through me in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, so what I'm saying is, is okay that you know, as long as because God wants to make a covenant with us, with you and I. So he is committed, just like in mobile phone company, is committed to paying, to providing you with, you know, those, um, uh, you know, um, the, the tariffs, you know, the maybe you know, unlimited text, unlimited, you know, uh, voice, no calls, uh, minutes or whatever it is, all those things, you no know, unlimited data. They are committed to do that. Now, how much more your heavenly father, God, is committed more than committed to do for you what more than what you know any other person can do what any organization only company can do for you just so long as you obey his word now that is what the covenant is now now it takes faith it takes faith to enter into such a covenant it takes faith to believe this word of god praise the hallelujah now you see here, 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 here the, the, the Bible says in, in that verse 2 of, the, of Genesis chapter 17, um, it says, And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you what exceedingly, exceedingly. Now, you must understand here that you know, here is Abram, and this is at the, at the age of 99. 99. Now, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Now, let's go to the book, of, let's go back you know, to verse, chapter 15. Chapter 15 of St. Genesis, okay, yeah? So, I'll read from verse 1. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Uh, then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and, and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for what? For righteousness. Here is Abraham in his in his 80s. Alright? The Lord is saying, the Lord is saying to him, here Abraham was having a conversation with the Lord. Abraham, Abraham says, Hey, God. You have not given me a child. I, I go childless. I don't have a child. The person in my house who was born in my house, a servant, you knows my is now will not inherit all these things that I have because Abraham was rich. You know, he was going to inherit all of it. But I don't have a child. And God said, No, this person is not going to be your child. It's not going to be your heir. One that's going to be born from your body will be your heir. Now, here you're talking to somebody in his 80s because you go to uh, chapter 16, because that's chapter 15 here. So, chapter 16, towards the end of chapter 16, you see that you no, know, so a guy, you see, Abraham was 86 years old when he bought Ishmael to Abraham. Okay, so that's a different thing entirely. So, here, Abraham, Abraham was in his 80s, I, I believe, when God spoke to him that he was going to that he was not just going to have a child, uh, that his descendants are going to be like as numerous as his child, and here he had no child at that time. Now, when you are telling that you know, to, say, a 25-year-old a child, well, you know, okay, me, okay, that's a prophecy, all right, definitely, I'll, it's, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll, I, can, I can agree to that, I can agree to that. You said that to a 30-year-old, I mean a 28-year-old, a 30-year-old, yeah. Even a 50-year-old, you say, okay, well, right, there's possibility. Even a 60-year-old, but you're saying that to an 80-year-old person, to an 80-year-old man, who 
in you know most cases has retired and just maybe perhaps you know, waiting for um, uh, you know death to come and yet you know God is saying to him you're going to have a child okay yeah uh -huh. now you see what did Abraham do now so how did Abraham work with God now this is what I'm talking about here how did Abraham work with God now I mean this is Abraham in his 80s and God is saying that this is what I'm going to do for you now humanly speaking it's not possible it's not really possible at all because you know he's is really you know gone to that point where you know being able to you know father a child will become very very um, almost impossible but he believed God he did what he believed God now if you go to the book if you go to so 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 what I'm saying to you, if you go to the book of you know Romans chapter, Roman, let's go to Romans chapter four. Romans chapter four, um, Romans chapter four, sums it you know, in this way. From verse thirteen, it says, "For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith." Man, this is a different you know, uh, topic. Uh, this is a different one entirely. But I can't go into it not now. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void. And the promise made of no effect. Uh, Let me. All right, I need to skip something here because it's, when I read this place, it's very, very powerful. It's so, so powerful. Um, okay, I'll read verse 16. It says, Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, who contrary to hope believed, so that he became the father of many what nations. He believed he, and then he became. He believed 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 and then he became. Are you catching something here? He believed even when he had nothing. When he was, he didn't have it. He believed God, what God said to him, and then he became the father of many nations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that he became, I want to repeat that again so that I can, you know, get into somebody. He believed and then he became. He believed and he became. He believed and he became. You will believe and you will become. I believe, I become. You will believe what the word of God says and it, will be, it, will, it, it, it shall be unto you as you have believed according to your faith. When you and I believe God, we become what the word of God has spoken concerning us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because Abraham believed and he became. He did not become, he did not be, he did not become a father of men and then become he believed. No, he believed and when it was okay, listen now. So that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. It was spoken to him, so shall your descendants be. There was no evidence of it at all. But he believed. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through or through unbelief. Hallelujah. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hmm. Being what being fully, the King James Church says, being fully persuaded, being fully convinced, being fully persuaded. That what he, God, had promised through his word, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, he was able also, he was also able to do what to perform. Do you, what do you believe that God can do? It, it is practically impossible for such a man and for Sarah, I mean, for Sarah, for Sarah, his wife, at 89 years of age, to become pregnant. With a child, and yet, and give and give birth to Isaac. But he believed, and he became. Abraham believed, 
<laughs> God's word, and he became the father of nations. You and I believe God's word and we will become what the word of God says, what the word of the Lord says concerning us. It says here, what was spoken, so shall your descendant be. Now, what has God spoken concerning you, you find it in the scriptures. You believe the word of God, you believe the scriptures above whatever else that has been said concerning you or concerning your situation. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. You believe, you become. I want to sound that again to somebody here. You believe what the word of God says. You become it in the name of Jesus Christ. Irrespective of the contrary circumstances, irrespective of the circumstances that are contrary to you, you and I believe what the word of God says and then we become it. Why? Because he is faithful. He is able to do it. Why? He says being fully persuaded. Now, this is how you walk with God. This is, what, this is how Abraham did what? This is how he walked with God. He believed God. He believed the word of God. It was an impossible situation, but yet he believed. You, my friend, you can also become what you believe God can do for you in the name of Jesus Christ through his word. What have you seen in his word concerning you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No matter what is being said, no matter what the circumstances look like glaring at you in the face, what do you believe that God can do? And you will become that in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You will become that in the mighty name of, who? of Jesus Christ. And that is the way that you know, Abraham walked with God. Now, very, very quickly, I'm going to you know, show you another place. In the book of you know, Luke, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, I read from verse 26. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 26. It says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed. To a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, as I call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be, the, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. I'll stop there for now. Here is, you know, um, Mary, visited by Gabriel, God's angel, and to say, Mary, yes, you are, um, obviously Mary was a virgin, you know, uh, at this time, and, um, you know, he, the Bible says he was already betrothed, he was already engaged you know, to, um, to Joseph to be married at some point. But here is the interesting thing that you know, the angel said that um, you have found favor with God. Uh, it says that in verse 31 says, and, you will and behold, you will conceive in your womb and you will bring forth a son. Now, um, and you shall call his name Jesus. So that word you will conceive means that you, know, you would not have, there is no there is no man that is going to be involved in this business. 
she's not going to have any kind of you know sexual intercourse with with joseph with any man because she had to you know this child had to be born but you know uh, uh but she said but, but the angel said you conceive now you see the the question now is mary asked the question how can this be since i do not know a man hallelujah and that's powerful in other words i am a virgin and that's what you know uh, my margin says that i'm a virgin how can this be when i'm a virgin you see this is where you know faith comes in this is an impossible it scientifically is impossible for a virgin to conceive without a man um humanly speaking is impossible Okay, yeah, uh -huh. humanly speaking, it's impossible. In every way, it's impossible. But Mary did what? Mary believed. She believed God. Hallelujah. Now, you see, she believed God and she became. I, I mean, this is, this is revelation right now. This is revelation the Lord is giving right now. You believe and you become. Mary believed. Hallelujah. <laughs> No, when she knew that there is no way it is not possible, it is not, it's humanly possible, it's not possible. Humanly speaking, it's not possible. In every way, in every way, it's not, it's, it's what is impossible. But look at what, you know, the angel said. For with God, nothing will be what? Impossible. With God, nothing will be impossible. Now, what did Mary do? Look at verse 38. This is very powerful. Mary said, the Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed, let it be to me according to your word. Father, I believe how it's going to happen, I don't know. But, but it says, therefore, with God, nothing shall be impossible. So Mary had to walk with God. Mary had to believe God by saying that, behold, the handmaid, or rather the King James Version said, the handmaid, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word that is what you know it means to work with god you believe god's word it is an impossible situation yes but the bible says here in verse 37 it says for with god nothing shall be worth impossible i want to ask you today right now what is that impossible situation before you what is that challenge before you now you bring it to know before the, and what does the word of god say concerning that you know, challenge you believe the word of God above that challenge, irrespective of that challenge, and you will become, hallelujah, what you believe God for. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen. You become what you believe God's word for, concerning. You believe, you become. You believe the word of God concerning your situation, and then you will have it. You become what you believe God for. Just a few days ago, just I think three days ago, two or three days ago, or something that came up. And then I was praying, I says, Lord, so so and so has said this. What do you say, Lord? How do we do this? I didn't hear nothing at all. In the, in the morning, I think, yeah, I think it was yesterday or so, uh, I think yesterday or, or three days ago or two days ago, uh, I was just in the bathroom, but just when I was in the morning, you know, getting ready to go to the office. I was just brushing my teeth, and the Lord spoke to me and said to me, According to your what? According to your faith. I said, okay, fine. Thank you, Lord. So what you believe the impossible that God can do and God will do. I want to state that. See, see, some people believe that God can do it, but you believe that he will do it. That's another thing again. You believe him. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. Listen, there's, there's a grace, there's an anointing right now just you know, flowing. I did not, you know... Uh, I, I don't know, but this is just the Lord, you know, just at work here. And you just receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe God's word. And you become what God's word says concerning you. There is there's a scripture I'm looking for here right now. Um, oh, boy. Where is that now? Where is that? Where is that? Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Help me here. Mm -hmm. Now, look at, go to the book of Matthew, chapter 8. 
Matthew chapter 8, very quickly, we'll, we'll, we'll round up now. Matthew chapter 8 says, verse 1 says, Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 1, it says, When he had come down from the, from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He knew that he knew that Jesus can, but he was asking, are you willing? Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, because you have believed that I can do it, I am willing. And he says, be cleansed. You believe that God can do it, my friend? Not irrespective of what the circumstances are saying. I mean, that is the way the enemy works. He brings this thing, you are afraid, there's fear all over you. But the Lord, what is the Lord saying? You believe God that he can do it and that he will do it for you. And you will see the results and you receive it in Jesus' mighty name. So, don't forget I said earlier, you believe, when you believe, you become. I want to sound this again to somebody here, to you. You believe what the Word of God says concerning you. You become it in the name of Jesus Christ. You put your faith in the Word of God, not in any man, not in any organization, not in anybody at all. Praise God. There was somebody, you know, that was introduced to me, you know, to do with our organization. And um, I, I prayed, okay, and the Lord spoke to me clearly. <laughs> Master Kiaba. The Lord spoke to me clearly. All right. It says, I am your helper. All right. So, now, so then somebody also now made reference to this person again. This person again. And then I decided, okay, fine. Let me just, you know, find out, you know, what this person's all about. And, and, and this person eventually then sent me an email because of there are certain things that we need to sort out. In our organization, and this person says, "Sorry, um, there's nothing that he or she could do." But when I mentioned that, you know, the Lord spoke to me clearly, and exactly what the Lord said to me is what is what has happened. So it is the Lord Himself, because He alone receives all the glory. He takes all the glory. I believe Him. Are you willing to believe God today? Praise God, Hallelujah! Are you willing to believe God in the very? In an, in an impossible situation, God cannot fail. That is what it means, and that is how we work with God. It says, we're talking about faith, how to work with God. Faith, how to work with God. You work with God by, by believing Him. You believe, and then you become what you have put your faith and what you believe God can do for you through his word. Now, lastly, we'll go to the book of um, Luke again, chapter, pardon me, Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9. All right, we're just conscious of time here. Mark chapter 9, I'll read from verse 14. And he came, Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 14, it says, And he came to the disciples. He saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit and wherever it seizes him, he throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, <laughs> how long shall I be with you? How long shall I, I, shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. We are living in a faithless generation, even much more. Why? Because people don't believe there's a God. And so, uh, science is everything now. Alright? So, it's just, you know, the 
financial, they look to the Bank of England or they look to uh, the the Prime Minister to save you know the UK right now from the current mess, uh, financial uh, inflation and everything, or the chance uh, because that's that's them. But when you believe God, no matter what the currency is saying, wherever it is that you are, when you believe God, come on. When you believe God to meet, not just to meet your needs, but be far and beyond that, you believe it, you become it in Jesus' mighty name. Right, okay. I just had to, you know, achieve that in. Verse 20, then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. Verse 21, so he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now look at verse 23. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things, hallelujah, are possible to him who believes. If you can believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And that's what I want to say to you today. What do you believe that Jesus can do for you? What do you believe that God can do for you? What do you believe that you know, that situation is before God? Do you believe that God can, and not just that he can, but that he will deliver you from that situation, or he will bring you out of that situation do you believe that he can and that he is willing to do that? That is what it means to work with God. You believe him totally to the end, to the last. You have no confidence in no man, but in him and in him alone. There is no way that Abraham would have been able to be the father of you know, many nations or to have been able to father a child at the age of 99, if not for the grace of God that he believed God. Or that Sarah at the age of 89 would have been able to have a child. It's not possible. It is completely, medically speaking, it's impossible. But he believed God. Is it possible for a virgin to be pregnant without a man having to come inside of her? Sex It's not possible. However, Mary believed God for the impossible. Can you, my friend, believe God for the impossible? Will you believe him for the impossible, no matter what it is? That is what it means. You believe him, says, Father, there is no other way. I have confidence in no man. And if you have put your confidence in, the, in any human being, in anybody, whether it is be a specialist or whoever it is, take that. The Bible says, no, curse to see that puts his confidence in man. Take it off. But rather put your confidence in who? In God through his word. Meditate on this word. Meditate on it meditate on it, sit down with the word of God, sit down with it, meditate on it, and faith be provoked in your life. Believe God for the impossible. That is what they did. Jesus says, if thou can believe, if you can believe, Mark 9, 23, if you can believe all things, not some things, all things are what are possible to you who believes. Your belief makes you become. When you believe what God says, you become what God says. You believe, you become. You believe the word of God, you become. You put your faith in the word of God and you become what the word of God has said concerning you. But the only thing that stands in your way is what is sin. Unbelief is sin. Sin, if you are practicing sin, you cannot become. You cannot even, you may believe it, <laughs> you know, you, you know, but nothing will happen. But if you will just know, just shift a little bit here and repent of your sins. And repent of your sins because sin blocks your faith in God. It blocks it. No matter, no matter how, who you are, it blocks it. But Jesus wants to give you, you know, an ed now listen, you see, I, excuse me please. Early this year, you know, um, something came up, <laughs> and excuse me, and um, I there was something, you know, I came, I I got a revelation. Oh my God! Listen, 
and that revelation was that you know something was I needed to do so I needed something and it's like you know it's like I don't know if it's my mind or the devil said telling me saying oh it's because you don't have this or it's because you don't have that that is why if you had this you could have been able to do that and the Holy Spirit thank you Holy Spirit that is why it's so important that you be born again that's why it's important that you give your life to Christ and you receive the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit spoke to me clearly and said because you have Jesus you have the advantage I believe that word and I still believe that word today certain times the situations come my way I said I have the greater advantage why because Jesus is with me I have the greater advantage no matter what I have I'm not listen I Clifford Obergi, I am not at a disadvantage no whatever never you when you believe Christ when you receive Jesus Christ as Savior Lord and you are serving him hey you are not Listen, you are never at a disadvantage. Never allow the devil to put that in your head. Never. You are never at a disadvantage. But always know that because I have Jesus, because Jesus is in me, I am at a greater, what? A greater advantage. I believe that with all my heart. And it is working for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. What do you believe that God can do for you? Do not look at your limitations. There's no limitation. No. There's no limitation. Somebody sent me a message one time asking me, Clifford, you know, you know, so so and so, what is, you know, has this thing, has this thing? And I wrote back to the person. And I said, look at what the Lord is on. Um, look at what the Lord has done. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. What you are asking for, where does it, it has no bearing in my life. Why? Because I am at a greater what? Advantage. You are at a greater advantage. If you believe that Jesus Christ it's on your side. I want to pray for you right now. If you are still in sin, if you are still living a life of sin, you cannot. You will be drowned by the cares and the, sit and the, and the problems in this world. But God loves you so much. He doesn't want you to remain in that state of mediocrity, of poverty, of sin of debt, of lack, of want. He wants you to be on top. Are you willing? All you have to do is to repent of your sins. Accept God's forgiveness. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And start living for Him. Start working with Him. If you want that, if you want to walk with God, faith is how we walk with God. Faith, how to walk with God. That's what I'm talking about. I want to pray for you right now because of time right now please just join me in this prayer right now pray this simple prayer after me repeat this after me and say dear God yes dear God I come to you today I acknowledge that I am a sinner I have sinned against you and I have broken your laws now I know that I have done them all in ignorance ignorance of your ways and ignorance of your word and I'm truly sorry for all my sins and I ask you to please forgive me wash me clean of all my sins with the precious blood of your son Jesus Christ I believe that Jesus Christ your only begotten son came into this world over 2,000 years ago died on the cross for me to save me from my sinful nature and from sin and on the third day you raise him from the dead that I may be justified. Therefore, I willingly receive you, Jesus Christ, into my heart to be my Savior from my sinful nature and from sin and to be the Lord of my life, to be the master of my life, to be the ruler of my life, to be the one whom I now live for and whom I now follow. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit to live a victorious and a successful Christian life. Loving you, Jesus Christ. Living for you, Jesus Christ. And serving you, Jesus Christ, all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me as your child. In Jesus Christ's mighty name I have prayed. Amen. I'm just going to pray for you right now. 
if you have prayed this prayer. Father, thank you for this ones who have prayed this prayer. The Bible says, O Lord, that with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And Lord, I thank you that your grace has brought these ones to you. And I pray, Lord, that your grace be multiplied upon their lives, O Lord. And Lord, that they will keep loving you, and they will keep living for you, and they will keep serving you all the days of their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, put a, an unquenchable thirst. Father, put in them an unquenchable thirst for your love, to keep loving you. Oh, to love you and to live for you all the days of your life. I pray right now, Father, that you baptize each one with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and with fire. Baptize each one right now with your Holy Spirit and with fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the baptizer, precious Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Baptize each one right now with your Holy Spirit and with fire, <laughs> that they will be on fire for you. Not lukewarm, not cold, but they will be on fire for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Baptize them, Lord, with your Holy Ghost and with your fire in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for them, Lord, that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, or even millions will come to know you through them in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless them. Bless their families. Bless the work of their hands, O Lord. And let your name be glorified in their lives always, O Lord. Cover you with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, I'm just going to pray for those of everyone here. Whatever it is, I'm just going to join my faith with you right now. I'm going to pray for you. Whatever it is that it seems impossible in your life right now, I want you to just you know, join faith with me right now. Let us believe the same way that Abraham believed God. It was impossible, but he believed God. Mary believed God. It was impossible, but she believed God. Now, you believe God with me right now. Come on, let's join faith together. Father, I pray, Father, for your sons and your daughters. I pray, Father, for everyone who is reaching out to you, having one circumstance or one situation, O oh Lord, that is right before them, standing there as a mountain right now. And Lord, you are the mountain mover. And by faith, O oh Lord, we declare and we decree every situation that seems impossible, we command you right now, give way in the name of Jesus Christ. At the mention of that name, every name was bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I speak to you situation right now. And I decree right now, be moved. I command you, I approach you from the life of these ones now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we believe that you are able to do it. And therefore, oh Lord, we thank you because you will do it in their lives, in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for doing it. In Jesus' mighty name, we, we have prayed. We believe it. And so we believe we become it. We believe it, and so we become it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Now, I trust that you have all been blessed by that in the message. Wow, it is powerful. I really thank God for that message. It was really, really much needed. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you all so much, and especially those of you who have, you know, Receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord today in the course of this, you know, um, uh, you know, teaching this service. I want you to know that that is the greatest thing, greatest decision you could ever make to uh, make a decision to receive Jesus Christ, to repent of your sins, first of all, <laughs> and receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And I want to congratulate you. Now, there are four things that you need to start doing, okay, um, now that you have repented of your sins, you have made a decision to turn back, to turn away from sin, to follow Jesus. First of all, number one, you need to start to attend a Bible-believing, teaching, and preaching church. It must be a church that honors God the Father, that glorifies Jesus Christ in all that they do, that reverences the person of the Holy Spirit, okay? They reverence, they reverence the person of the Holy Spirit, and they also emphasize on the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of what was speaking in tongues. Okay, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So that is where you should go to. That is where you should go and learn and grow in your faith as a born-again Christian, as a child of God now. Okay, all right? So this is very, very important. It is so, 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 so important. Please, you must endeavor to do that, okay? Endeavor to find a Bible-believing church, okay, all right? Where you can grow 
and not just be a Sunday, Sunday, you know, no, you are plant the Bible says those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in this court. So be there and start to serve in that place. If it is to serve tea, coffee, sweep, you know, whatever it is you have to do, you know, ushering, whatever it is, you know, join the choir, whatever it is, go out and evangelism, do that. You part of it. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, you need to start to have to spend time in reading the Bible, the word of God. Praise God. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So first of all, you start reading it, meditate on it, okay? Read, don't be in a hurry. Read it and ponder over it. Ponder. Read it. Don't be in a hurry to like, oh, I just want to read from, I want to read this whole chapter. No, 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 no. Don't, no, no. As you read, you ponder. What's the same? Okay, and that's how you I start to meditate on it. And revelation will come. Ask the Holy Spirit before you read the Bible, always pray. Lord, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, grant me understanding. Grant me understanding, grant me revelation, speak to me in Jesus' mighty name, and you see it happens. And also, you know, uh, please make sure that you log in, okay, every Wednesday and every Friday on this you know, platform at 7 p.m. GMT, and then so that you can also grow. It is the word of God, you know, that we are preaching here, which will definitely benefit you and build you up. The Bible says, I commend you to God, Acts 20 32, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among those who are what sanctified by faith in Christ Jesus. So, the word of God. So, that's number two. Number three, you must have an active prayer life. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Okay, all right? So, Jesus was a man of prayer. You have received him. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of grace and word and supplication. So, you need to also spend time, find time. Not just find, you need to do it. As, as, you, as you breathe in oxygen, so is prayer should be. You, you have to. You must dedicate time. To it because that is how you will grow what spiritually okay all right and then fourthly and lastly start to tell people about jesus christ don't keep it to yourself go out there tell your friends tell your neighbors tell everybody about jesus christ go out on the streets and tell people that jesus saves and jesus loves them and trust me you know god in heaven your heaven our heavenly father will be pleased with you and bless you more abundantly in jesus mighty name I wish to thank you all so much for being a part of this service. For those of you who have joined us for the very first time uh, on our social media platforms, again, we, uh, you know, um, we, we thank God for your lives, and I trust that you have been blessed by this service. Now, please don't forget what I said earlier. You believe the Word of God concerning you, concerning the situation, and you become. Don't forget that. Okay, all right? Don't believe in the condition the situation before you know believe the word of god abraham the bible says as it was as it was told him he believed what the lord said to him so believe that now please don't forget we'll meet again next week wednesday uh 7 p.m gmt uh, uk time so for all those of you who are joining us from uh, different parts of the world please do note that we meet at 7 p.m uk time so endeavor to uh, join us at, at this time now um tomorrow being saturday please i would also encourage you all go out and with tracks i mean somebody did you know um uh, contact us and uh, requested for a track from me and sent you know some tracks out there to him and he received it so you too can do same as well go out there you need to tell people about jesus it doesn't cost you anything to tell people about who jesus christ okay right so i Sign up by declaring the word of the Lord over you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. Lift his candles upon you and give you peace. I place the name of Jesus Christ upon you and your family. That that name will bless you. And because of that name, you are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are favored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right. Have a wonderful and a fruitful weekend. And a Christ-centered one at that, and uh, and a fruitful week ahead as well. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord bless you. See you again next week. God bless. Bye. Gospel Ministries every Wednesdays for Bible study 
and Fridays for Revival Service on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube via the link showing on the screen. Follow us on all our social media pages for daily inspiration from the Word of God.